Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Car Enthuse YouTube channel. First off, I want to thank you guys. We got to 100 subscribers, and that's so sick. So it took us about a month to get there, um, but I'm super happy with that result. Thank you so much for your support and helping us get there. Let's get into today's video. So this one's going to be a little bit different. I'm in the Quadrifolio, but none of this content's going to be about the QV. Today, I'm going to be working on my wife's car. We just got back from going to a wedding, and there's a small chore that I've been putting off for a little while, and I thought it'd be cool to record this and kind of show people what I'm going to do. And you probably already got it from the title, but we're going to be using a little bit of this today on my wife's car. First things first, I'm not going to be just coating her whole car in one of these or many of these cans. Um, I don't like that. I don't think it's a good look. I think it looks tacky. But there are some badges on her car and some excess chrome that would be really, really nice to just kind of black out. I think it'll make the whole car look better. So I'm going to try to figure out logistically how I'm going to do this in a shared parking garage, in a shared parking lot on a sunny day, I don't know. These aren't necessarily the conditions that we want, but we'll figure it out. So we're just gonna look at what it takes to mask off some of her car, get those emblems and things knocked out, and yeah, I'll take you guys along for a ride. Let's go. Okay, so this is my wife's Mini, and quite a bit of chrome pieces on this car. But it looks pretty good. It's got the nice, black roof to contrast with the white body but again a lot of chrome throughout so the hope is to soften up some of that by blacking out some of these emblems we'll do this all for we'll get this chrome trim around here blacked out and we're going to consider what we might do with either the headlight trim also the front grille and maybe this tail light trim as well. So I'm going to start masking stuff off and then we can see how that looks afterwards. All right, so here's how this is looking now. So I've got this taped up a bunch. I am going to overspray on this. That's okay. It should be easy enough to clean up. But to reduce overspray on some of these other parts, I put up some newspaper. And so what I'm going to end up doing are just the sides. I'm not going to do anything up front for now. Got both of these taped up and then I'm going to do the Countryman logo as well as the Cooper portion of the Cooper S logo on the back. So now that I've got this taped up I'm going to take it outside and I'm gonna go ahead and hit these chrome bits with the Plasti Dip and see how it turns out. All right, and here's how this is looking now. So you can see that this is all kind of getting its matte uh, color and texture in after a couple of quick coats. It's kind of hard to see on the camera. But these are looking pretty good, freshly sprayed. I'm gonna let them sit and dry off here for a little bit. You really can't see anything in here. But all freshly sprayed, got quite a bit of overspray on some of these pieces, but honestly, it's not too bad to clean off. It's not fun, but it's not any more annoying, in my opinion, than uh, the little bit of extra prep work. So I'm gonna let these dry and then we'll come back and I'll show you how it looks. And here's how the front came out. So this is all matte now. Uh, I'm still working on peeling the rest off on these all four logos, but it's turned out pretty well. So here's the other side. This again being all matte now. The all four on this side, which I'm also still finishing up. And then the trunk is looking pretty good too. Again, working on this as well. I need to go grab... Uh, like a toothpick or something to help kind of pick out these these inner portions but yeah and as well as the, the cooper badge so okay what's up guys so this is actually the next day i got a killer migraine last night i couldn't really finish up everything the way that i wanted to so we're jumping back into this the next day and i'll show you how everything looks right now i've done a little bit of trimming and stuff in between the last clip and this clip 
Um, but I'll show you th where things stand, and then we'll just kind of wrap it up here. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about what I need to do next and what I might have done differently. So, yeah, let me just take you around the car and show you where things stand right now. Okay, so here's the back. The Countryman logo, generally looking pretty good. The Cooper logo, also, I think, looking pretty good. You can see through here all of these kind of frayed bits. I need to come through and clean those up. That's kind of what I'm talking about when I'm saying I'm still finishing this. And doing the same thing down here. I just need to kind of clean this up a little bit more on the all four. And then generally things are looking pretty solid around these side pieces here. And then same thing on this side, just needs a little bit of cleanup. <clears throat> and then I've got a bunch of overspray that you should be able to see right here. Uh, this stuff is pretty simple. It just kind of, even with your finger, will rub right off. So I'm not too worried about that, but yeah, this is how it's looking. Yeah, so that's that's basically it. This has been kind of an interesting experiment. It's been probably six, seven years since I used Plasti Dip on a car at all. And so I did my badges on a previous 335i that I owned. And I thought it'd be nice to kind of experiment with it here. Cost 11 bucks for a can, so I thought that's a nice cheap way to just black out a few of the things on the car and see how we like it. If this wasn't a lease, uh, we might just spend the money to buy the, you know, OEM or aftermarket blacked out items. But... It's a lease. This is easily reversible. Didn't want to spend too much money on some of this stuff. My plan right now is to just keep going around. I've got tweezers uh, that I've been using when I pull up a piece of Plasti Dip. I don't use it against the paint or anything like that, but I'll, I'll use it to help me get a little bit of leverage to pull away from the paint and start really separating things out. And then I've just been using like these little wooden toothpicks to kind of scrape at the edges and stuff. They're soft enough that I'm not worried about it damaging the paint, uh, especially in any way that's really worrisome on a lease. And uh, yeah, it's been super easy to kind of go through and, and pick everything up so far. I think the one piece of advice that I would give is just spend some time on the prep work. Like I said earlier in the video, there are certain things I skipped the prep on a little bit. I don't necessarily regret that, but I would have rather like spread the newspaper and stuff out a little bit more so I don't have to deal with the overspray. I think my wife is happy with it. I think she'll be more happy with it when I've finished up these edges and stuff. But yeah, I uh, hope you guys have found this video interesting in the slightest. I tried to make this one a little bit shorter so that people are watching through to the end. Let me know in the comments below, have you ever used Plasti Dip? Is it something that you try to avoid? Do you like using it? Have you ever done a whole car? If so, sorry, because I called it tacky earlier in the video. Uh, I'll try to post another video late next week, but thank you guys again for watching another one of these videos. Thank you again for helping get us to 100 subscribers. Let's see where it goes from here. All right, see you guys.